months here. I wrote, David promises to be completed when we know something about him. Um, to be, David promises, that's all I'll say. And David, would you like to come up? One of the things that speakers hate the most is having to follow somebody that's amusing and highly entertaining. So... <laughs> so my special thanks go to Suzanne for making my job this evening a little bit easier. From being a talk show host to getting involved in aviation. Always been fascinated by aviation. Uh, my father's half Iranian, my mother's from Ireland. So as you can imagine, when I was growing up in the 80s, most of our family holidays were spent in, well, they were spent in the customs hall. Uh, <laughs> and I developed an unhealthy interest in aviation. And as, as Suzanne said, I was part of the team that set up the low-cost carrier, being my baby in 2002. Uh, if you think that's unusual, then our finance director used to be a bookie. Uh, our our chief pilot used to be a butcher on the east, in the east end of London, and our head of, head of cabin services, she had another job as well, but I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> the only person I've ever met who's never flown before was my grandma, who sadly passed away now. And even when I was running the airline, she refused to get on the plane. She said it'd be the last day of her life. She died in a hideous air crash. Everybody else had died with her. She was unlucky. Even if I was on the plane, I knew the pilot, everything, she wouldn't get on. And sadly, she passed away without ever flying, which was a great sadness to me. And she passed away very peacefully in the end. She just sat back in a reclining chair, put her head back, looked up to the ceiling and passed away. It was all very peaceful. Scared the hell out of the dentist, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I'd never said that now. Uh, great. And we were actually flying on one of his aircraft for our internal flight in Australia. And we got to the departure gate, looked at the manifest. He goes, you'll love this pilot. I thought, great, a bit of Australian humour. On the plane, on the terminal, not a word. Push back. Not a word. Take off, not a word. Cruising altitude, not a word. Two hours into a four hour flight, the PA system came on. Halfway. <laughs> and that was it. That was all we had for the four hour flight with the word halfway. Anyway, he forgot to turn the PA system off. So the conversation I'm about to relate to you was heard by everybody sat in the back. He turned to the captain. And he said, we've got a night in Malaga. What are we going to do? <laughs> and everybody in the back went. <laughs> and the captain says, I'm going to have a long hot bath. I'm going to have a double gin and tonic. And I'm going to make mad, passionate love to that cabin crew girl at the back. <laughs> everybody turns around. <laughs> She's gone bright red. She takes her seat, but often she goes charging down the aisle. And she trips over in front of the first row. And this little old lady bends over and goes, there's no need to rush, he's got to have a bath and a gin and tonic first. <laughs> Lisa, we're going to have to pop you in one of these high-vis vests if it's all right with you, Chris. I didn't realise you were that size, but uh, <laughs> we should be able to get it on. Might not do up, but... All right. <laughs> Are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? Look at your passengers, not at me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your pilot speaking. I'll be a captain, actually. So your captain speaking. The cabin crew are primarily here for your safety, and we would like your attention while they perform the following demonstration. It is normal procedure to dim the cabin lights for takeoff and landing so the pilots can get some sleep during the most dangerous part of the flight, and on this occasion to enhance the appearance of your cabin crew attendant. <laughs> Mark, there may be 50 ways to leave your lover, but there are only six to leave this aircraft. The emergency exits are two doors at the front of the aircraft. Mark, that's the rear. Front's behind you. Look, this is just a bit of fun for you. It's a career for me, okay? So if you <laughs> two doors at the front of the aircraft, two doors at the rear, and two overwing exits. <laughs> In the event of a sudden loss of cabin pressure, oxygen masks will drop from the panels above you. Stop screaming. Stop screaming. Grab the mask, pull it over your face, and breathe normally. If you are traveling, if you're traveling on Ryanair, insert a one euro coin to activate the flow of oxygen. <laughs> Thing up, there's this girl, big smile on her face. So what are you doing? She's I'm gonna come clean. I was gonna kill myself back in England when your crew saved me, saved my life. We're sailing to Australia together, been bringing me food and water. And I have to say he screwed me, because he certainly has. This is the Isle of Wight Ferry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, meal will be served. Thank you very much. Thank you.